Good evening, and welcome to the North Carolina Museum of Art. Give yourselves a hand. I am Moses T. Alexander Green, and I serve as the Director of Performing Arts and Film here at the museum. And I am Michelle Frederick. I'm Associate Curator of European Art here at the NCMA. And so we want to give you a little backstory on the journey that we're going to take you on this evening. Commissioned by the North Carolina Museum of Art and composed by classical pianist Carolyn Colquitt, the Netherlands, the Shonabari, the Journey is a musical interchange reflecting artworks by Ludolf Backhausen and Yinka Shonabari. This piece imagines a conversation between two works in the museum's interchanges cross collection conversations, a series of installations featuring the NCMA collection in new forms. Recognizing the often strict borders between art historical genres and time periods, interchanges breaks these boundaries moving artworks around to challenge and to interrupt preconceptions. Interchanges faces challenging histories head on, highlighting the global connections in art throughout time and celebrating the relevance of art to contemporary life. One interchange pairs an early 18th century Dutch seascape by Ludolf Backhausen with a life-size mannequin sculpture by British Nigerian artist Yinka Shonabari made in 2005. This pairing intended to be jarring emphasizes the global trade networks built on and supported by European colonialism. Shonabari's sculpture is dressed in Dutch wax cloth, a type made in the Netherlands, but popular across Africa starting in the 19th century. Behind it, Beckhausen's painting of warships expresses Dutch maritime power, success that was similarly founded on colonialism and slavery. Such paintings de-emphasize that Dutch ships carried hundreds of thousands of enslaved Africans to the Americas. Rather than simply documenting, these paintings often present only a selective view into the past. And so what we'd like you to now understand, what you're going to hear tonight, these are the six passages of what has been created. Part one, the Netherlands. Part two, warships. Part three, Africa, hunt and capture. Part four, over the seas. Part five, Suriname. And part six, Shonabare. So at this time, before we introduce them to you, we'd like to ask that you would kindly turn your cell phones on to vibrate or turn them off. We'll take about five seconds for you to do that if you have not already. And while you're doing that, I'm going to tell you who you're going to be seeing tonight. You will be seeing Sandra DuBose. That's wrong. You will be seeing Sandra DuBose, who is a multi-talented performer. You'll be seeing Bonnie Thron, who is the principal cellist for the North Carolina Symphony. And you will be seeing the composer herself and classical pianist, Carolyn Colquitt. We also have Mr. Larry Wall, who has provided sound effects to enhance the meaning of the composition. Again, tonight we present to you the Netherlands, the Shonabari, the journey.
journey with us back to the 17th century. What you hear is the celebratory music that was traditionally enjoyed by the Dutch once they gained their independence from the British. This music marked the beginning of their golden years. In order to prosper, it was required that the Dutch conquer the perils of the treacherous waters of the North Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. This is the painting, Ships in a Stormy Sea, created by Ludolf Hausen in 1702. It is one of the paintings of the exhibit, and it depicts four Dutch ships battling turbulent waters. The oceans led them to Asia, South America, North America, and to many parts of Africa, like the Ivory Coast, Ghana, Angola, Nambia, and Senegal. Everywhere the Dutch landed, 
they conquered the people and established their own Dutch colony. History speaks of the blood and misery of those lands that were invaded. Ah, Africa, a land rich and flowing with an abundance of natural resources. The Dutch exploited many of those resources, but their largest, most lucrative exploration, exploitation was the capture and the trading of African people.
the Dutch were responsible for transporting over 600,000 slaves from Africa to each of their newly conquered colonies. Establishing the Dutch as the largest slave trading enterprise in the world. Many Africans refused to be enslaved as they neared the shores of Suriname. Many jumped overboard. Some survived and then swam to shore and disappeared into the interior of the colony. Suriname, the colony where the Dutch deposited over 400,000 of the 600,000 Africans they enslaved. There is an eerie silence as the enslaved depart the ship into a strange land and are led to the auction block. All right now, all right now, settle down, settle down, settle down. Settle down, settle down, settle down. I have a fine young buck here, just picked from the trees. Settle down now, settle down. This one's just picked from the trees, bright as a monkey. Good bones, sinews, good teeth, and a strong back, free of defect. He can pull like an ox and carry like a mule, good for whatever crop you're harvesting. Step up, gentlemen, see for yourselves. Do I hear, do I hear sold? All right, now we have a young gal about 15, 16, good for breeding. Can work in the house or in the fields. She's never been whipped with the lash. This gal is in good shape. She's young, she's supple, she's strong. No damaged goods here. If you like to inspect the wench just to determine the quality of your potential purchase, just step on up. Step on up, I say. Now, do I hear? Do, do I hear? Sold, sold. Right here, we have a little pickaninny. He'll grow up to be a strong field hand, a prize investment right here, a real buck someday, but tame. Come, inspect his eyes, his ears, his hair. You'll find no defect here. Comes from good stock. His mother is a breeder. Now, do I hear? Do I hear sold? The slave owners of Suriname were some of the harshest slave masters in history. Life for the enslaved working there was absolutely brutal. The Shonabari is a life-sized mannequin sculpture created by the British Nigerian artist Ginka Shonabari in 2005. She was introduced to the North Carolina Netherlands exhibit to represent the true story.
statuesque, stately, with arms outstretched, questioning, yearning, begging. So what do we make of Shonabari? How do we reconcile her beauty, her style, her grace, in the midst of enslavement? How does her majesty contradict the narratives of racism and anti-blackness that were constructed to justify slavery? reconcile the truth of Shauna Barry and the black people who have descended from her? How do we dispel the lies told about her and her people? How does humanity replace the evil, the selfishness, and the greed that fueled slavery?
time, the Dutch began to treat Africans in a more humane way. The slave owners even allowed the enslaved to celebrate their culture and heritage in an annual celebration called Dioramas. They were given the opportunity to experience something that felt like freedom. Humanity prevails, and slavery is eventually abolished in Suriname and in many parts of the world. But we still have a long way to go. Again, ladies and gentlemen, let's thank, that's Mr. Larry Wall, who did the sound effects, thank him. 
Sandra DuBose for the narration. Principal cellist with the North Carolina Symphony, Bonnie Thron. And the composer herself, Carolyn Colquitt. Now, we did not advertise this, but if you'll stay with us for about 15, 20 minutes, we're going to do a talk back with them. Michelle, would you join me, please? Wasn't that incredible? <laughs> the North Carolina Museum of Art. Oh, and I need to pause. Our wonderful CEO and executive director, Dr. Valerie Hillings, is here. And how awesome it is that I get the opportunity to, uh, through her vision, commission works such as this. So thank you so much, Dr. Hillen. <laughs> so I want to start first with Michelle Frederick. Michelle, um, you remember our very first conversation about the Interchange Project. So we gave a description at the beginning. Could you tell them your purposes specifically for this interchange? Sure, so can everyone hear me okay? Through my mask, it's hard for me to tell. <laughs> okay, wonderful. So yeah, the Interchanges program was really the uh, brainchild of Dr. Hillings, our director, um, to, yes, please, hands. <laughs> um, and this is a way to really enliven our collection. Um, one of the pillars of which is European art, which had been presented in much the same way it is most places for many, many years. And, we wanted to highlight that this is not the only story we can tell. Um, just because we've been telling it doesn't mean we need to continue to do so. And as the curator in charge of our Dutch and Flemish paintings, um, the Interchanges program gave me an amazing opportunity to start to open up these questions. Um, the narrative that we heard so beautifully tonight is the typical story of Dutch art. You know the. Netherlands gain their independence. They have this beautiful economic and artistic flowering called the Golden Age. Beautiful paintings like ours are produced, and that's it. But of course, that's not the only story. So um, these histories are embedded in the paintings that we have in the European collection, but they're very rarely talked about. They're very rarely visible. And so inserting something beautiful and dramatic like the Shonabare sculpture allows us to question whose golden age is this and what other kind of story can we tell? And that's really the impetus behind this pairing. And I'm, it's on view right now if you haven't already seen it. For one more week. For one more week um, in our West building, our newer building, uh, at the beginning of the Dutch galleries, this is the first thing you see when you walk in. So I encourage you, if you haven't yet, to go check that out when the museum is open to the public. So wow, can we give Michelle Frederick a hand for the insight for this? So, Carolyn Colquitt, you know that I reached out to you in December. <laughs> Carolyn Colquitt, I reached out to you in December and I said, I had already spoken to Michelle, I said, Carolyn, let me show you something. And I said, I want to bring this to life musically. And can you tell us the process that it took for you to come up with? And again, everyone, she wrote everything that you heard tonight. She wrote it. She wrote it for the piano. She wrote it for the cello, the narration, and there's a tremendous amount of research. Can you give us your process, please? Well, my process was um, to study. So I went to the exhibit and I looked at it and I studied. I think I talked with several people and said, why do you think her arms are outstretched? Why do you think she stands so tall? Why doesn't she have a head? <laughs> Why are they so happy? And then this ship is so dark. And so I began to research. I talked with you about it. And you got, your, you got your PhD. So she gave me quite a bit of research, enough for me to be interested. And so I just began to research. And I found out that the, uh, the Dutch like Baroque music. That's what their, their traditional music was. So that we, we started with Baroque. And then when they were um, liberated from the British, they figured they needed to conquer those waters so they could go out and make money. So 
the wartime. So that's the, the, the uh, painting that I chose. And so where did they go? So thus we hit Africa. And then what did they do now that they have the slaves? One of my favorite pieces is Over the Seas, which um, now we're going over and we're gonna decide what we're gonna do to make our money. But the thing, the challenge that I had was to how to plant the Shonabari, which is so elegant and so beautiful, into Suriname, which is where they deposited so many slaves in such a desolate and negative situation, but there's nothing negative about her. And I think that's how it is with life. All different cultures have so many positive things, but we don't see them. Even though they're standing real tall and very obvious, we don't see them, we don't embrace them. So I decided to embrace them and have Shonabari have a conversation with everybody. Why do you do this? Don't you see me? I have much to give. I have much to show you. I have worth. And so that's how I figured we come out of the negative to the positive, and then we would celebrate with the dioramas. And so that's, that's the flow of the story. And I tried to write music that made you feel that way. <laughs> so Bonnie, I reached out to my good friend, Pat Peter Askham, and I said, I need a top-notch cellist. And yes, she is. And Peter gave me, uh, not just top notch, the principal cellist of the North Carolina Symphony yes. to play for us since 2000. Can you tell us this experience for you, namely, how do you interpret everything? Because, you know, you have inanimate works of art that we've asked you all to bring to life. Um. Well, Carolyn told me the story first. She was very clear about that. And then I came to her house for a rehearsal. Um, uh, Carolyn, um, she, what she didn't say about the way she composes <laughs> is, is you get a scan of this page and a scan of that page. And if, if, um, if you look at what I'm reading off of, <laughs> oh, let's just put a repeat in there or whatever. But she, um, uh, she talks about over the seas, and she definitely had in her mind to write something with cello. Um, and that's the first piece she, she uh, had for us to play in this rehearsal. And it's so lyrical. So much of her music is, is so lyrical and so, so beautiful. And so fitting for the cello. Um, so uh, at that point, um, it's like, okay, this is going to work. <laughs> uh, so I want to actually apologize. The museum bought a wonderful <laughs> scoring uh, package for Carolyn. And Carolyn was like, it is not working. I will write all this music out by hand. And, and I was like, So the museum has a refund coming to it, and uh, we appreciate it. Michelle has the next question. Yeah, I have a question for you, Moses. No, no. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, Carolyn, yes. um, I would like to know what you want people to take away from this experience. I think it's what I said about the Shonabari and being planted in Suriname. We have so many wonderful things about America is a melting pot. There are so many different people here that have so much to share. We are more alike than we are different. And no matter what the generations have done before us, I think it is our job as we become enlightened and we lighten our hearts that we look for the positive so that everybody can have a good life. And the negatives will will go away or they, they won't be as important as the positives and it will be such a richer world. And so I would like us to, to take upon the mantle that let's uh, look at things a little differently. Let's love a little bit more than look at people and say, mm, they are different. Let's just love. <laughs> Thank you.
And so Sandra DuBose would one Thank you, Sandra. <laughs> Wonderful. Sandra, how did you identify with the process or specifically Shona Bari? Um, you know, for me, it's all about the storytelling. So it was really getting connected to what are we saying? I mean, and, and it's the beauty of sound, right? So we're enjoying the sound effects, the ocean. We're creating this whole, you know, if you're listening, but you're visually seeing and this picture come together. So it was definitely a connection there for me. And as, a, as, a, as an actor, as a voice actor, it was how do I use my voice to really convey this story? And Carolyn gave me the creative freedom to, you know, use some different characters and become you know, the, the, you know, at the auction block and all that, because I was like, can I play with this? Can we have some fun? She's like, do what you do. I'm like, yay me. So, <laughs> so we got to open it up and have fun and really bring that part of it to life. And of course, Shauna, Shauna Bari, you know, as a black woman, she, you know, this is my story. Her story is my story. So there was definitely a connection there when we talked about the pain and the reality of the experience of the enslaved and moving that into this space of freedom yes. and being able to celebrate the shift and the change. Yes, yes, these things happen, but then let's move this into how we use those things to empower us, to make us stronger, to make us wiser, and let's move from that space into this place of celebration and then, and the, just you know, reiterating what Carolyn was saying, what we all take away from that is what do we do now? We understand our history, but how do we make things better for tomorrow? And that is each one of us, we have a personal responsibility to figure out how do I do that in my life? It's not for the government, it's not for them, it's for That's us. Right. right where you are, what can you do to make things better? And I think part of that is celebrating and understanding our history. Um, all the cultures have insensitivity to other people's experience. Um, and then us all working together to make things look better. So, and I just have to say, girl, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Did she do it? One of the things I said to, to Carol, and I just want to share this compliment because it, it, I've worked with Carolyn on so many different things, but seeing her work and in her element and being able to dig into this level of creativity and we all get to see how deep of a well her, her talent is and this new expression of her that we don't always get to see. She's finally getting to open it up and I told her, I said, you are my Quincy Jones. <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> I paid her. No, she didn't. No, she didn't. You know it to be true. Ain't it true? Yeah. I'd like to say just as a bit of a closing thought, um, as a curator who works on paintings that are hundreds of years old in a very different time than we live in now, as Cedric said toward the end of the program where humanity didn't always win. Um, I am just so honored and thrilled to have been a part of the program tonight to be able to witness these painting, this painting come alive in a way that I never thought was possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and in this time where I have not been near, near a live performance, in the room with a live performance right. in over a year. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'd just like to kind of close on this personal note by saying I'm so honored to have been here for your performance tonight. And it was just so beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Thank you to everybody. Thank you. So good to see you. And I just want to say uh, my main purpose here at the museum is to create places of belonging. Because belonging is more powerful than any kind of diversity or inclusion initi initiative because people feel like they belong. And I hope that each of you know that your culture matters here and that you belong here. Yes. Dr. Hillings, do you want to say anything? Are you? Yes. I just want to say, everybody who's here, yes, it's great to be together. Um, but I'm so happy to see original creation. We as a museum do not exist without you artists. And um, it is our purpose to share your brilliance. And I also am really grateful that we're able to, to tell these new stories. That was what I brought in as my wish and dream for the museum. And, you've helped to bring a, ch a chapter of that alive tonight. So thank you so much, and thank you everyone for being here, and keep coming back. This is just the beginning. Thank you so much. All right, everyone, have a great night.